Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I am Valsa Williams with the Midday News. The headlines. Supreme Court upholds 10% reservation for economically weaker sections in admissions to educational institutions and government jobs. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to unveil the logo, theme and website of India's G20 presidency through video conferencing tomorrow. Army Commanders Conference begins in New Delhi. External Affairs Minister S. Shankar embarking on a two-day visit to Russia today. UN Climate Change Conference underway in Egypt with the key aim of ensuring full implementation of the Paris Agreement. And National Cancer Awareness Day is being observed today. A majority of a five-judge bench of the Supreme Court today upheld the validity of the 103rd Amendment of the Constitution, which provides 10% reservation for economically weaker sections, EWS, in admissions to educational institutions and government jobs. Three judges, Justices Dinesh Maheshwari, Bela Srivedi and J.P. Pardiwala upheld the act and two judges dissented. Justice S. Ravindra Bhatt passed a dissent order calling the law discriminatory and violative of basic structure. Chief Justice U. U. Lalit also concurred with the view of Justice S. Ravindra Bhatt. Justice Srivedi ruled that EWS quota law is not discriminatory. Justice Maheshwari said it does not violate the basic structure or equality code for taking into account economic criteria. It also does not cause damage to any essential feature by exceeding 50% ceiling for quota since the ceiling is itself flexible. The 103rd Constitution Amendment cannot be said to reach the basic structure of the Constitution by permitting the state to make special provisions, including the restriction based on economic criteria. Two, amendment cannot breach the basic structure of the Constitution by permitting the state to make special provisions in relation to the admission to private unaided institutions. Three, amendment cannot breach the basic structure of the Constitution in excluding the SEBCs, OBCs, SCs, FCs from the scope of EWS reservation. The 103rd Constitutional Amendment was cleared by Parliament in January 2019 and was instantly challenged in the Supreme Court. While most opposition parties, including the Congress, did not oppose the law, as many as 40 petitions were heard by the Supreme Court against it, including by the state of Tamil Nadu, which has among the highest reservation in the country. The petitioners had questioned several aspects of the EWS quota, including how it could cross the 50% national cap on reservation, set by the Supreme Court in 1992 and whether it changed the basic structure of the Constitution. The case was first presented before three judges who referred it to a larger five-judge bench in 2019. This September, the Court held a marathon six-and-a-half-day hearing of the case and reserved its verdict. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will unveil the logo, theme and website of India's G20 presidency through video conferencing tomorrow. The logo, theme and website will reflect India's message and overarching priorities to the world. Guided by the vision of Prime Minister Modi, the foreign policy of India has been evolving to undertake leadership roles on the global stage. In a significant step in this direction, India will assume G20 presidency from the 1st of next month. It offers a unique opportunity for India to contribute to the global agenda on pressing issues of international importance. G20 is the premier forum for international economic cooperation, representing around 85% of the global GDP, over 75% of the global trade, and about two-thirds of the world population. During the course of its G20 presidency, India will be holding about 200 meetings in 32 different sectors in multiple locations across India. The G20 summit to be held next year will be one of the highest profile international gatherings to be hosted by India. President Draupadi Murmu today presented the National Florence Nightingale Awards for the year 2021 to the nursing professionals at Rashtrapati Bhavan. The awards are given to recognize the meritorious services rendered to society by the nurses and nursing professionals. It was instituted in 1973 by the Union Health and Family Welfare Ministry. 
The Army Commanders Conference began in New Delhi today. The conference will brainstorm on current and emerging security situations and chart the future course for the Indian Army. The five-day conference is a formal forum for the senior leadership of the Indian Army to interact with the senior officials of the Department of Military Affairs and Department of Defense. The framework for enhanced operational effectiveness, promoting Atmanirbhata and future challenges to progressive military training will also be part of the deliberations at the conference. Defense Minister Rajnath Singh will address and interact with the Army commanders on Thursday. The Indian Air Force will start online registration for Agnivir Vayu at 5 p.m. this evening. Registration will close on the 23rd of this month. The application process will be carried out in online mode only. The Agnipat scheme was approved by the government a few months ago for recruitment of youth in the armed forces for four years. Those between the age group of 17 to 23 years are eligible for the recruitment and 25% of them will be granted permanent service. In the Assembly elections of Himachal Pradesh, this time too, there will be more focus on the Assembly seats of three districts, Chamba, Kangra and Mandi. It is clear that this time the Congress has given its full strength on these seats. On the other hand, the Bharatiya Janata Party wants to increase this victory figure. Congress and BJP have given full force to win this seat. Most of the campaigning for this assembly seat is being done by a star campaigner. In the 2017 election, the Bharatiya Janata Party won four out of five seats in Chamba while it won 11 out of 15 seats in Kangana district. Similarly, it had won 9 out of 10 seats in Mandi district. While the Congress is trying to change this figure this time, the Bharatiya Janata Party wants to repeat its success again. On the other hand, the Aam Admi Party is also trying to establish its party like the neighboring state of Punjab. Sanjeev Sundrial, AIR News, Shimla. The Delhi State Election Commission today issued notification for the election to Municipal Corporation of Delhi, MCD. With this, the process of filing of nomination has begun. The candidates can file the nomination between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. on all working days, including Saturday. The last date for filing nomination is the 14th of this month. The election for 250 MCD wards will be held on the 4th of next month and the counting will take place on the 7th of December. At present, there are over 1 crore 46 lakh 73 thousand voters registered in the national capital. External Affairs Minister Dr. S.J. Shankar will begin his two-day Russia visit today to hold talks with the country's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. Talks between the two sides are expected to cover the entire range of bilateral issues and exchange views on various regional and international developments. Dr. Jay Shankar is also scheduled to meet Deputy Prime Minister of the Russian Federation and Minister of Trade and Industry, Denis Mantarov, his counterpart for the Indo-Russia Intergovernmental Commission on Trade, Economic, Scientific, Technological and Cultural Cooperation. Minister of State for External Affairs V. Murlidharan has arrived in Sao Paulo for a two-day visit to Brazil. This is the first high-level visit to Brazil since the conclusion of the country's presidential election last week. The minister will attend the solemn session on 75 years of India's independence, which will be held in the Brazilian parliament. Mr. Murli Tharun will address the Brazilian parliamentarians, both from the upper and lower house, representatives of the diplomatic corps and international organizations, and representatives of the Brazilian government and India. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. क्या आप वरिष्ठ नागरिक हैं? क्या आपके मन में सेहत आर्थिक सामाजिक या भावनात्मक मुद्दों से जुड़ा कोई सवाल है आकाशवाणी आपके लिए लेकर आया है कार्यक्रम एक कदम और बुजुर्गों के लिए हर रविवार रात साढ़े नौ बजे एफ एम गोल्ड पर। आप अपने सवाल हमें व्हाट्सएप नंबर नौ दो आठ नौ शून्य नौ चार शून्य चार चार आरोप भेज सकते हैं या इस पते पर ईमेल कर सकते हैं एक कदम और एआईआर न्यूज एट जी मेल डॉट कॉम वेलकम बैक टू द मिड डे न्यूज the ban on entry of trucks in the national capital has been lifted in view of improvement in the overall air quality of the Delhi NCR. Primary schools in the city will also reopen from Wednesday. Briefing media today, Delhi Environment Minister Gopal Rai said the ban on construction work related to highway, road, flyover, overbridge, pipeline and power transmission have also been lifted. However, restrictions on private demolition and construction work will continue. 
The minister said 50% work from home for Delhi government employees has also been revoked. Union Minister for Road Transport and Highways Nitin Gadkari and Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan will inaugurate 13 road projects worth over 5,000 crore rupees in Jabalpur and Mandla districts of Madhya Pradesh today. Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister said that various road construction projects are being completed at a fast pace in the state. Various routes have been approved by the state government and the central government under different schemes. Kerala Governor Arif Mohammad Khan has said a situation is being created in the state where vice-chancellors are being stopped from performing their duties. Speaking to media persons in Kochi today, he said attempts are being made to create law and order issues. The governor also accused the state government of trying to control the affairs of the Raj Bhavan on allegations that the governor is trying to meddle with the state administration. Arif Mohammad Khan said he is willing to resign if any such instance is proven. He also urged the state chief minister to have a public debate on the issues. In the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir, the upper reaches of Kashmir Valley have received a fresh spell of snowfall, while incessant rain has been lashing the plains of Kashmir region since last evening. Srinagar Leh National Highway and Mughal Road, an alternate road link connecting Kashmir with the rest of the country, have been closed for vehicular traffic due to snowfall. Srinagar Jammu National Highway and H44 has been blocked at Mehad and other places between Ramban and Banihal due to overnight rain and landslides. However, traffic authorities are making all-out efforts to restore traffic on all the highways. The UN Climate Change Conference began in Egypt yesterday with the key aim of ensuring full implementation of the Paris Agreement. More than 120 world leaders are scheduled to address the summit at Sharm el-Sheikh. Environment, Forest and Climate Change Minister Bhupendra Yadav is leading the Indian delegation of the conference. The minister said India is looking forward to substantial progress in the discussions related to climate finance. For the first time since the adoption of the UN Climate Convention, parties have agreed to introduce loss and damage funding as an agenda item at the climate conference. A total of 15 films will compete for the coveted Golden Peacock at the 53rd edition of the International Film Festival of India, IFI, in Goa. The IFI will be held from the 20th to the 28th of this month. The mouth-watering lineup comprises 12 international and 3 Indian films that represent the emerging trends in the aesthetics and politics of the art. The films which are in the competition this year include Polish filmmaker Krzysztof Zanussi's Perfect Number, Mexican filmmaker Carlos Eichelman's Kaiser's film Red Shoes, Iranian drama No End and Hindi film Kashmir Files. National Cancer Awareness Day is being observed today. This day is observed annually to highlight the significance and promote awareness about the diagnosis, treatment and early detection of the disease. According to the World Health Organization, cancer is one of the leading causes of death worldwide. In India, nearly 1.1 million new cases of cancer are being reported annually. Speaking to AIR News, Dr. Rakesh Garg at Ames New Delhi outlined the precautions that could prevent cancer. Today is a very special day. We need to know about cancer because cancer to a certain extent is preventable. We need to understand that if we take certain precautions like tobacco, like taking uh, less exercise, taking junk food, and certain activities like physical activity, the obesity, uh, all those things increase incidence of cancer and they are all preventable. Also, if we can diagnose cancer earlier, it is treatable. So why not to ignore those symptoms which can make us diagnose cancer? In our bilingual live phone-in program, Public Speak, at 9.30 tonight, we will bring you a discussion on National Cancer Awareness Day with Dr. Rakesh Garg, additional professor of anesthesiology, critical care, pain and palliative medicine at All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi. Now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Supreme Court upholds 10% reservation for economically weaker sections in admissions to educational institutions and government jobs. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to unveil the logo, theme and website of India's G20 presidency through video conferencing tomorrow. Army Commanders Conference begins in New Delhi. External Affairs Minister S.J. Shankar embarking on a two-day visit to Russia today. UN Climate Change Conference underway in Egypt with key aim of ensuring full implementation of Paris Agreement and National Cancer Awareness Day being observed today. With that, we end the midday news.